Redeemer, Deliverer, Glorious in Holiness, Wonderful in Praises, O oh, those wonders, we we'll bless you, we we'll bless you, we honor you, we adore you, we we'll declare that thou alone art God, from everlasting to everlasting, you are the same, not like you, the lifter of men, the way maker, the restorer, all power belongs to you. All honor belongs to you. All adoration belongs to you. You are greater than the greatest. You are mightier than the mightiest. Than the almighty. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you are. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your power. The lifter of men. The Eshadah. Adonai. God most high. You are worthy. You are perfect. You are holy. You are excellent. You are merciful. You are glorious. You are wonderful. Not to be compared to thee. Ancient of days. Mighty King. Excellent God. Thank you, Father. Unto the Lord. Be all glory, great things he has done unto the Lord. Be all glory, great things he has done unto the Lord. Be all glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord be your glory, great things he has done, great things he has done, great things he will do say unto the Lord be your glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord be all glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord, oh, be all glory, great things he has done. You are the mighty God. Hallelujah, great Oh, yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you, you are, you are the mighty, mighty God of greater. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, 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 hallelujah, as our Father. I see Almighty Father, He is King of Kings and Lord of all. Asava Fa, Alleluia, Asava. Parakapola Tosafelia Nakata Sekotoria Mashala. He is King of Kings and Lord of all. Asava Father. Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you did the first day. Thank you for what you did the second day. Thank you for what you did the fourth day, the third day. Thank you for your hand, the fourth day. Thank you for your hand, the fifth day. 
thank him for the sixth day. Now we are in the seventh day of July 2023 School of Power. Your name alone is worthy to be praised. Your name alone is worthy of thanks. You alone are worthy of adoration. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Let your name forever be praised. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'd like you to pray two prayers for yourself. Two points of prayers. Number one. My Father, bless me. Go ahead and pray. My Father, bless me. I need your blessing. Bless me. This program is coming to an end today. Bless me. Bless me. Now you know better what the blessings of the Lord is. So pray. Bless me. Bless me, Almighty God. Bless me. You blessed Abraham, blessed me. You blessed Isaac, blessed me. You blessed Jacob, blessed me. You blessed Esau, bless me. You blessed Mordecai, bless me. Oh, bless me, my father. Bless me. I give you two minutes. Pray. Bless me. Bless me even me too. Lord, bless me. Bless me. Bless me, O God. I need your blessing. Lord, bless me. Bless me, almighty God. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, King over the nations. Bless me, immortal. Bless me, the invisible. Bless me, the only wise God. Bless me. Bless me, Lord. Bless me. Bless me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The prayer number two, you want to pray. Say, my Father, release the oil of blessing upon my head. Just go ahead and pray. Release, O oh God, the oil of blessing upon my head. Release the oil of blessings upon my head. You bless Isaac with fruitfulness. You bless Solomon with wisdom. You bless Abraham with favor. You bless Esther with favor. You bless Joseph with the gift of interpretation of dream and favor. You bless David. With favor. Anointing of the champion. You bless David with the grace of a worshiper. And with that blessing, 
He assess everything. Let the oil of blessing come upon my head. Oil of blessing. Oil of blessing I'm asking for. Oil of blessing, O oh God. Release the oil of blessing upon my head. My Father, bless me. Release your oil of blessings upon my head. Cry to him. Oil of blessings, oh God, Lord, release it upon my head. The Bible says, let your garment always be white and never let your head lack ointment. I need the oil of blessings upon my head. My head must never be dry. Bless me. Bless me, even me too. Bless me. Release the oil of blessing upon my head. Let there be a deposit in my life that will be the seed of transformation and greatness. Pray. Shalada kapoto satolina kapantori anasafida. Bless me, even me too. Bless me, my father. Bless me. Bless me, O God. Bless me, Almighty. Bless me, ancient of days. Bless me, the brighter morning star. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me, ancient of days. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, breathe upon our understanding again. Draw us closer to yourself. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The power of his blessings, part four. And which is the last part of it. Let's continue our journey from Second Corinthians chapter 4, line 16 to 18. Second Corinthians 4, 16. To 18. Second Corinthians 4. 16 to 18. Sixteen to eighteen. God's blessing. It's a divine investment into and upon the life of a man that makes the man exceptional in his generation. I hope you have gotten that. I hope you have gotten that. God's blessing is a divine investment upon a man that makes the man exceptional among his peers. 
even among the children of his father. Even among the children of his father. God's blessing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, line 16 to 18, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed daily. The outward man perish. But the inward man is renewed daily. Verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Oh, somebody will ask, are you saying come with the blessings of the Lord? His challenges, yes. Yes. The challenges is part of God's system of venting your loyalty. Your genuineness, your sincerity. In this kingdom, we know, we know that the bigger the test, the bigger the glory. That's the truth. The bigger the test, the bigger the glory. Apostle Paul is the most troubled and afflicted among the apostles, but is the most blessed with insight and revelation among all the apostles. To the degree, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. The grace that was bestowed upon me, I do not take for granted. Therefore, I labor than they all. I labor than they all. The greater the hard time devil pushes at you and you endure faithfully, righteously, gratefully, mark that three, faithfully, righteously, and gratefully, you endure the bigger the glory. Do you notice Job, my servant? He said, yes, I notice him. I want to see that he's a faithful man. <laughs> Can a man be faithful for not? I know he's a faithful man. 
And it's faithful because of one thing. You are satisfied with everything. Everything. What is it that a man cannot give for his life? Oh, that you know. All right. But let me tell you, God, that boy that you are think is loyal to you is a lie. He's just loyal because of the bread and butter. Jesus said, God said no to Satan. No, I know him. You, do, you don't know his heart. I know his heart. Let me take everything away. You will see that you deny him. He took everything away from Job. Job did not deny God. Uh -huh. He did not. And at the end, God now said to Satan, all right, don't worry. You have only given me a chance to double the blessing of Job. Everything you took away from him, I will give him in double fold. A double food. And you have only given me a chance to prolong his life. I prolong his life. Since you have decided to destroy the thing he used to use to aid to achieve, then I will give him a longer life. For the light affliction which is but for a moment. What cuts for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory? Exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We we'll come back to that. Let's go a little bit to the book of James. Let's go there. Let's take a stroll to the book of James. You will see what James has to say. Let's go to this. James chapter 1, man. Please. James chapter 1. Because when we talk about the blessings of God, we are not taught that it comes with a lot of temptation, a lot of trials, a lot of venting, Another people, another body that can promise you blessing and can take like forever before it comes like God is federal government. If the, if the federal government promises you a blessing, get ready to be patient, get ready to be prayerful, get ready to be loyal. The same thing with God. I'm here to talk about the keys to securing the blessings of God now. <laughs> In James chapter 1, line 1 to 4. James 1, line 1 to 4. I want to be together. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes, we scatter abroad greeting. That means James is writing this letter to the twelve tribes of Israel. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse kind of temptations. Count it all joy when you are hated for no cause. Count it all joy when you are persecuted for no cause. Cut it all joy when the enemy shut all the doors against you. Cut it all joy when the enemy rises against you for no reason. A man was asking me yesterday, after the afternoon program, I went out. So when I was coming back, I branched his um, office just to say hello to him. What he used to call me is my daddy. Far older than me. The man is approaching his sister. One day I asked him, why do you always say my daddy? He said, sir, what you know I don't know. 
what you carry and do not carry. And there is no time you branch here, I don't get less. He asked a question yesterday. He said, when somebody is praying against you, what do you do so that the prayer will not work? And I told him, you cannot stop people from praying against you. You can't stop an abadist from doing evil sham. You cannot stop a Christian that is not born again, a pastor that is not born again, from praying negative prayers. But you can ensure that God remains on your side. Oh, possibly you have missed something. Oh, you think it's your prayer and fasting that has stopped the wishes of your father's house from dealing with you the way they wanted. You are a liar. You are a joker. Possibly, we should take a stroll to Exodus chapter 15. When Miriam was singing the praise of God, Miriam said, the enemy said, we will pursue. We will overtake. We will prevail against them. We will divide the spoil. We will satisfy our lot upon them. But what did the Almighty do? He drowned the enemy in the Red Sea. The Bible did not record that the children of Israel were praying. So if you think it is your prayer, your aggressive prayers, as important as his word for your victory, that has stopped the enemy from achieving their enterprises. Isaiah 44, 24 to 26, he frustrated the tokens of the liars so that their hands cannot perform their enterprises. Go back to this. Count it all joy. Why? Verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Can I tell you something? God cannot bless you more than your level of emotional patience. Mental patience and spiritual patience. Or else, the blessing will destroy you. God cannot bless you more than your level of patience. Emotional patience, mental patience, and spiritual patience. Look through the Bible. All the men got blessed. They learned what they call patience. They learned what patience is. Listen. Patience and obedience are two children that you must learn if you will come into your inheritance. If patience of the children of Israel made them to backslide over and over again. In other words, where you see disobedient reign, you see impatience leading the way. The leader that impatience, uh, disobedience follow is impatience. The leader, disobedience follow is impatience. If they ask you, who is the leader of disobedience? Is impatience. Is impatience. Oh, possibly I should give an example. I think this is for Samuel chapter 11 or chapter 10. For Samuel. 
eleven also the children of Israel were to go to battle. King Saul was to lead them in the battle. And they were supposed to wait before the Lord ten days. And then after the ten days, seven days, my apologies, Samuel was to come and offer a sacrifice the seventh day before they go to the battle. The seventh day came just like today. The way some of you be impatient, you're going to break your fast now. You will not wait for instruction. Ah, I've tried. Today is seventh day. Ah, after the lunch hour, now I'm going to go and eat too. Ah, it's not easy. I'm not to eat pepper and salt for seven days. I'm going to eat now. Saul was impatient. The enemy were approaching. The children of Israel were mighty pressure on Saul to go do the work that is not his responsibility. Samuel was nowhere to be found. One major weakness of Samuel is late coming. Read your Bible very well. Samuel is never in haste. If you want to deal with Samuel, you have to be very patient. But then, despite his late coming weakness, God is pleased with him. God is pleased with him. When it was around 6 p.m. in the evening, Samuel was nowhere to be found. Saul went ahead to offer the sacrifice. The Bible said, as soon as he was done offering the sacrifice, Samuel came. In patience, is the leader of disobedience. Can somebody write that in capital letter for us? In patience, is the leader of disobedience. In patience. When you are not patient to learn, you will be disobedient to instruction. Even your obedience will be sick. When you are not patient, you will get this Russian wrong. Many have acted contrary to instruction. But if you permit me, that if patient was part of what added to the problem of Moses, he was so angry that he just wanted to satisfy the people and get them off his sight. And because of that, he violated instruction and it went ill with him. Patience and obedience is a major force in receiving the blessings of God and sustaining the blessings of God. Haroni Sakapolina Kimbala Nato Sakopatia. Write it in capital letter. Never forget that. Patience and obedience are major force in receiving the blessings of God and sustaining the blessings of God. You want to be blessed by Him? And you want the blessings to last forever with you. Patience and obedience are major force 
He who cannot wait for God cannot be blessed and mightily used by God. If you cannot wait for Him, you cannot be mightily used or blessed by Him. Many is not a cause. We not finish the assignment because of impatience. Elijah sir, go and wait for me upon the mountain. I am coming. Yes, sir. Elijah waited and waited and waited and waited. God will soon come. A breeze came, violent breeze came. I'm talking of First Kings chapter nineteen. The Bible says, "Behold, God was not there." Earthquake came. The Bible says, "Behold, God was not there." There was thunder. The Bible says, "Behold, God was not there." But then it says, "There comes a still small voice." If Elijah was not patient, he will miss the still small voice. If Elijah was not patient, he will miss the still small voice. Write this down capital letter. When you are not patient, you will always miss. The still small voice. When you are not patient, you will always miss the still small voice. Isaiah 30 20 to 21. Isaiah 30. 20 to 21. The Bible says, even though it fills you with bread of affliction and the water of sorrow, you see one thing is certain, your teacher, that means your guidance, shall never be removed to a corner anymore. Why? Verse 21. You will hear a voice in your ear saying, This is the way. Walk therein. This is the way. Walk therein. I say right in capital letter. If you are not patient, you will always miss the still small voice. You will always miss the still small voice. Thank you, Sister Justina. As long as you choose not to be patient, you will always miss the still small voice. And that is the leading voice. That is the guidance voice. That is the voice that bears the light that will show you the right way. And then at the end of the day, you will always define disobedience. You will always be found guilty of disobedience. But you are not patient. Let's go back to James chapter 1. James is saying when you are challenged, when you are troubled in the midst of your delay, while your expectation seems to tarry, truly the Bible says, 
prolonged expectation makes the heart weary. Yes, the Bible says. The fat hope wearies the heart. Yes, it is true. But James is telling you that whenever your expectation is delayed, either by whatever force, by devil, by the system of men, by a government, by demonic manipulation, in the midst of that, always be thankful, be cheerful, be faithful. Can't it all joy? Knowing that the trial of your faith, who is trying you now, it does not matter. Devil can be setting trap for you and you can turn it over to God and declare that, Lord, I know that this my trying period is to your glory. Devil was the one tormenting Job. Job never saw it as devil. The wife of Job was demonically sensitive enough and discerning enough that this is devil. The reason he was telling Job, why don't you deny this your God and die? You have been faithful to him and he's allowing devil to do all of this to you. Deny him and die. And Job said no. Even if it is God, not talk of now is devil. Even though he slay at me, I will yet praise him. Nothing can frustrate devil. Like when he's at work against you, your life is still returning glory to God. There is no way of telling me to God that Lord, I am all yours, irrespective. Of what devil is doing to me. Like when you are in your trial period, you still rejoice before him. Still rejoice before him. Can't it all joy when you fall into diverse kinds of temptation for the trial of your faith? Produces patience. Listen. Higher percent of our Adamic weakness, our Adamic weakness, we mature over them, we drop them. Apostle Paul said, When I was a child, I think like a child, I talk like a child, I reason like a child. I behave like a child. He said, but when I became a man, when did you become a man? That is a Yoruba saying that interpret in English. You have not gone through anything in life, any hard time in life, and say you are experienced. Who is your teacher? Who is your teacher? Who is your teacher? There are childish mindsets that it will only take trouble and affliction to collect from us. The Bible says, Jesus learned obedience by what he suffered. Stop glorifying the devil all the time in the midst of your trial and affliction. Verse 4 of James chapter 1. But let patience have a perfect work. Let patience have a perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Ye may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing, wanting nothing. You are not lacking anything. One thing, one thing. That the time is coming that you will tell somebody 
There was a time I was like this. And the story will look strange and odd in their ears. Are you sure you have been through this kind of situation before? Oh, there was a time I was in debt in the tools of millions. I say you. So you have ever owed a debt of even one million, you are still standing like this, and they did not jail you. Let's read that James chapter 1, verse 4. In Amplified verse over the Bible. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience. Let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work in and upon you so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed. I am assured and you have not, you don't have a record of failure in your life. No, you are not sure. God don't remove tough times for his children. He makes them tougher through the tough time. You hear me? Yes. Understand this carefully well. When you are fully mature now, you will be entire lacking nothing. You will be without defect, lacking nothing. All the people you celebrate, oh, I like so 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 person, I like so so person, is mature, is clinical. There were times that their weakness is more than their strength. But through the refined fire of their troubles, they were regenerated back to Second Corinthians chapter 4, please. Verses 16 to 18. For the light affliction of the present moment worketh for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Verse 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen? This is a powerful secret. If you are always looking at what you lack presently, you will miss what it takes to secure what is greater than what you lack now. You will do what will abort your chances of getting more than what you lack now tomorrow. Many people are going to steal. Whereas there is a bringer blessings upon them and ahead of them. But they are going to steal because they need to pay school fees now. Because they need to pay our strength now. Why we look not on the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are in time. Apostle Sema says, those coming behind are greater than those who had already emerged. You can predict the eyes, the person that you have seen already on the stadium can go in life. But you cannot predict the eyes, the person coming behind can rise to. If there is no any sign of success in my life, if I'm just starting a standard and, and I look as if really I don't know what I'm doing, but you by one way or the other find out that this person has a focus, it is foolishness for you to judge how far I can go. 
Because you are seeing people who are God farther than me. You are a joker. Those that you are seeing on the platform might have reached their height. Me that I'm coming behind, you cannot predict how far I can go. Anyone who meets Joseph in the act of Potiphar will celebrate him and say, yes, he has reached the height. Even the butler who met him in prison never knew that Joseph will soon become his boss. Even the boss to his own boss. Never. Keys to receiving and sustaining the blessings of God. Number one. Be patient and obedient. That I've, talking, I've spoken about a little bit. Be patient and obedient. Your verse is, I am coming of God. It's not always on time. I am coming. <laughs> uh, the day God tells you I am coming, wear the garment of patience. And be obedient. If you lack this tool, you will never be faithful. And then I think it's first Corinthians, if I'm correct, first Corinthians chapter four, verse two. It is required in steward that servant be found faithful. First Corinthians four two. It takes patience and obedience. For you to remain faithful as a steward. It takes patience and obedience for you to be able to do away with all the pride and ego that comes with success and achievement in life. When you know how many years it took you to arrive at where you are, you will be more careful not to accrue any glory to yourself. Because something got power and anointing without going through any rigor or process of getting the power of God as it's supposed to be, he was never patient with the use of the power. He became careless. You must be patient and obedient. And how do you get that patience? Discipline. Discipline is how to get that patience. Discipline. In discipline, man cannot be patient. In discipline, man we, we, we prefer to commit the error and come to apologize. And that is the mindset of a fool. I put my body under subjection, under subjection at all times. Discipline. Discipline is the key to patience and obedience life. Is the key. You must decide that no, I don't want to help. Therefore, I have to be obedient. Two, what is the third key to securing and sustaining the blessing of God? The second key, knowledge. Knowledge. Right knowledge is not just power on his own. It is blessing on his own. For they that know their God, they shall be blessed with strength and with the grace to do exploits. Daniel 
Shalina kuna katos kafili anikota. I see the sign; it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Knowledge. They that know their God. One, they will be blessed with strength. The Bible meaning knowledge keeps you strong. Once you are mentally strong, that means once you are mentally stable, fear, anxiety, worry will be far from you. Can I tell you something? You cannot be efficient and effective more than the depth of knowledge inherent inside of you. Oh yes. You cannot. So the quality of the knowledge you possess is the determinant of your strength and your doing grace. The quality of the knowledge you are. Give yourself to knowledge. And ye shall know the truth. John 8, 32. And the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know. Then you shall be free. There are bondages that prayers will not break. It takes the right knowledge to be free from those kind of bondage. You want to be free from poverty only by fasting and prayer. I hope you don't have also because your poverty will keep pushing you into fasting all the time. Knowledge. God cannot bless you more than you are enlightened. Can you write that in capital letter, somebody? Somebody else write the capital letter. God cannot bless you more than you are enlightened. Expose yourself to light. It matters a lot. Give yourself to knowledge is fundamental to the delivery and the manifestation of God's blessings in your life. Spiritual illiteracy, mental illiteracy, financial illiteracy, any of them at whatever level and bring your destiny to a standstill. God cannot bless you more than you are enlightened. Three. The third key to sustaining and receiving the blessings of God. Key number three. Attitude of gratitude and goodness. Attitude of gratitude and goodness. Goodness and mercy only follow those who are gracious and kind to others. Do you hear me now? Can you write that in capital letter? Not those who are prayerful. Yes. Goodness and mercy only follow those who are gracious and kind to others. If you are not gracious and kind to others, goodness and mercy will be far away from you. Goodness 
some mercy. And somebody write that in capital letter, please. Goodness and mercy only follow those who are kind and gracious to others. Surely, he says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Joseph is ever gracious and to people. Goodness never ceases from his life. How about Daniel? How about Mordecai? How about Abraham? Abraham saw strangers and, and got worried and said, Oh, these people must have been coming from a very long distance. Let them come and eat in my house before they go. Goodness and mercy. You never know that, know it today. So the more you are cruel, on fear, on kind to others. Don't worry. The more you chase away goodness and mercy from you, goodness and mercy is a spirit. They are not things. It's a spirit. And they follow about. They follow about. They glue themselves to people with kind hearts. I'm a disciplinarian. I'm a disciplinarian. I was reading on somebody's status the other day. I don't know whether the person is listening to me. I, I can't remember the person again. The writer wrote, Honesty without kindness is cruelty. Honesty without kindness is cruelty. Discipline without the face of mercy makes you a wish, a wicked person. of gratitude and goodness is a key to receiving the blessings of God. It is not all beggars that are ritualist. So bear it down my set. I don't give beggars money. You. Why? <laughs> many of them, many of them. How do you know? Judas was complaining about this expensive alabaster boss of oil. Ah, oh, there are poor people to feed the poor. Jesus says it's not my duty to feed the poor. It is your duty to feed the poor. I will bless you. You will take care of the poor. That's simply what Jesus is saying. When he said, Don't worry, the poor you will always have in your midst. Me, I will not always have in your midst. Maybe it is your duty. To take care of the poor around you. Why it is my duty to bless you. That's one thing I know. That's the reason I know that. The lending to the Lord program. Is an untold measure of security blessing for every participant of it. And I must see Fali and the Kotoshia. The fourth key to receiving and sustaining the blessings of God. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is the last key to receiving and sustaining the blessings of God. Have you mastered the art of patience and obedience? Have you? Do you have the art of gratitude and goodness? Have you cultivated that habit? Have you? Are you constantly growing yourself, developing your capacity, sharpening your skills? Illiteracy or limited knowledge have made many people opportunity to pass them by. Completely pass them by. Have you? Are you diligent in prayer and fasting? I don't care your situation now. One thing I know by the God of heaven, very soon your life will change. The Lord anoint you. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord empower you. He keeps you standing. 
You go from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from mind to mind, from power to power. You will rise. You will not fall. You will succeed. You will excel. You will do good. In the mighty name of Jesus, the mighty hand of God rests upon you. In the name of Jesus, the glory of God incubates your life. His mercy enveloped you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Make sure you did not miss the 8th of the 21 ninth of